Will you please welcome the world's leading authority on all things Bob Dylan, Mr. Clinton Ailey. You've been asked to provide the theme song for a movie of a 400 page novel about a wonder kind looking to overcome a seven year writer's block while his life of constant infidelity and professional frustrations was unravelling at a rate of knots. Gee, I wonder if there was a connection. <laughs> the song in question, Things Have Changed, used the same voice as in his last movie theme tune, Band of the Hand, and the one he would adopt in his own next movie, Mass Than Anonymous which he was already formulating. Here was that Pentecostal persona who suspected the Bible is right, the world will explode, even as he is trying to get as far away from myself as I can. A line with a great deal more resonance for the songwriter than Michael Douglas's pot-smoking Professor Tripp in Curtis Hansen's marvelously atmospheric movie, Wonder Boys. As the director insightfully observed, the song also stands alone as Dylan's own caustic midlife commentary on life at the turn of this new century. <coughs> Indeed, this single line may well have triggered the whole song. It's also incidentally the title of the second volume of my book, Far Away From Myself. Dylan scrawling this very phrase on the back of a boxing gym business card sometime early in 1999, shortly after he penned another fragment that included the coupler been lifted up to heaven and cast down below, never was the kind of person who knew how to say no, which encapsulated Michael Shabon's novel of the same name perfectly. Possibly this abandoned fragment became things have changed, containing as it does the line Everything about today has been just one big lie, which seems to have become all the truth in the world adds up to one big lie. One in a number of lines and things have changed with very little bearing on the film, but which provided a sign on the movieola as to what Dylan's next LP held in store. Presumably, these were the kind of half ideas he was carrying in his head when visiting the director in the editing suite as Hansen told him the Shaban story and introduced him to the characters. Only then did he complete Things Have Changed, further propagating a worldview as dark as anything in his post-conversion canon. Indeed, when he accepted the Oscar for Best Original Song in March 2001, he expressed his thanks to Curtis, who just kept at it and just encouraged me to do a song which doesn't pussyfoot around or turn a blind eye to human nature. Three other Dylan songs that didn't pussyfoot around also appeared on the soundtrack. Buckets of Rain, Shoot and Start, and Not Dark Yet. But it was things of change he needed to get down on tape when the, when the touring band convened one Manhattan afternoon in July 1999. David Kempner, quote. Bob said, tomorrow let's go in the studio. I got a song I want to record. We went in and he played us Things Have Changed. And we did it with only an engineer in New York. Bob produced it. We did two takes. The first was a New Orleans thing and the second take is what you hear. And then Dylan went back in and he wanted to replace one word. And when you do a punching with Bob, that means the band all plays the song. You're recording Bob's vocal plus all the leakage of the guitars and the drums in the vocal mic. So when you hear it back, you don't hear any change. So in about five hours, we learned it, recorded it, mixed it, and that was it. Dylan's on the hoof methodology is not one the young engineer, Chris Shaw, despite working with Booker T and Jeff Buckley, had previously encountered. According to Shaw, Dylan only really got very interested in him when he heard that I got my start doing public enemy records. 
Shaw confirms we did things that changed in one afternoon. <coughs> but the real test came when Dylan asked him for a quick mix. Quote, so I did a quick rough mix to that. Bob listened and said everything was too clear, too easy to pick out every instrument and note. He wanted to mush it up. Dylan employed a trick of his own, running his vocal back through a guitar amplifier. Shaw placed an electro-harmonics graphic fuzz box in the signal chamber. Nodding in approval, Dylan reached over and pushed the percussion track up nearly all the way. I thought, it's just a reference mix, and ran the dat again. A couple of days later, Jeff Rosen, Bob's manager, called and asked me for the quarter inch tape of the mix. I was stunned. It was just a rough mix, a very rough mix. Jeff said, oh, you don't know Bob. That was the final mix. Whatever the sure footed Shaw had done, Dylan seemed to approve, as did the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences as the singer found himself belatedly nominated for an Oscar. But he was already committed to another Antipodean tour in March 2001, and would have to film both a safety performance, in case the satellite link went down, and his acceptance speech from a studio in Melbourne. Unfortunately, when he arrived at the studio, he found that the overexcited local production crew had spent the first past four days programming the lights, so that as soon as he started to play, they would interact with some complex camera moves. They obviously did not know their man. Four bars into the safety version, the lights started to move. Six bars in, Dylan stopped playing and said, I'm not a disco act, please change <laughs> the lights. The director came down from the control room, quote, with all respect, Bob, we just want to make you the star. We're all here to serve the song. Dylan set him straight. He wasn't interested in being the star. His only concern was transmitting the song's meaning. So lose the lights and lose the camera moves. The result was the performance that fully captured the claustrophobia of the song. Mr. Clinton Allen. Thank you.